Okay, um, so just wanted to let everybody know this is going to be the office hours for homework number four. So you can ask questions about homework number four. You can ask questions about any of the assignments up to this point if you have them as we go along. Um, and there's a, obviously there's a couple of key things I usually try to point out about each assignment for this as well. So let's take a look here at the assignment itself. So this is the same assignment you guys have, same um, file you download. So a few things should look very similar with this, okay? So what you're going to do here is you are going to be expanding on assignment number one, okay? So it says right here, you will need to use what you've learned in four, five, six, and use your proposal from homework one. So I am expecting you to use the proposal from homework one. So if you haven't taken a look at your feedback um, file from homework one, I highly recommend that you do that. Also take a look at the one from homework number two because both of those are going to help you with this assignment. Okay, so I am expecting you, again, I am expecting you to use homework number one, okay, for this. So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be creating a report. So in this, a report pretty much has no page limit. So you can have it be, you know, 10 pages, you can have it be 20 pages. Um, I'd prefer if you don't get it up to about 40 pages, just because that takes me a long time to read and grade. Um, but again, you know, it's your call on this. Make sure you want to make this as detailed as you can. Okay, this is your chance to put everything out there about your project, the one that you're interested in, the one that we've been looking at since course three, okay? So full report here is what we're looking at. So there's a lot of different things in this report, right, that you're going to, you're going to want to look at. And when you're looking at this what to submit list here, so I'm looking at the what to submit list, right, there's a bunch of things in here that should look pretty familiar to you, right? So there are things in here that you should be able to take out of homework one rework them because we're not doing a presentation this time, right? We're doing a report. But if you've done a good case study, if you've got your good case study from homework three, if you've got your presentation um, well done from homework one, um, or excuse me, presentation or case study from course three, presentation from homework one in this class, this, a good chunk of what to submit should be really, um, really good for, good to go. Hang on one second, we're gonna check with the audio here. So just pause. Okay. Okay. So um, if anybody else is having audio issues, hopefully um, we'll get that solved as well. So with that being said, um, again, you're doing a project proposal. So it's your project proposal. I want you to reuse the information from homework one, and then you're going to be expanding on it, okay? So this report should be more detailed than in several places than what you had in homework one. Does that make sense? Okay, because we've been covering a lot of things since then. So again, though, a bunch of this should look really familiar to you. We've got, what is your project que or question, or what is the problem that you're trying to look at? What is the situation that you are looking at addressing? Okay, we also want to have what is that basic project approach. So in homework one, some people forgot the approach, and that's really common. Um, that's a common thing that people forget in homework one. So approach, what I'm thinking, what we're looking for for approach, what I'm looking for here is, how are you going to tackle this problem? How are you going to address this question? How are you going to address the situation? So are you, going, are you thinking you want to do um, a comparison project? And who are you going to compare to? Are you thinking you're going to do an improvement project? Um, what kind of improvement uh, um, uh, tactics are you going to use? So think back to homework, or um, excuse me, course number two. We did a whole course on improving, on improvements, process improvement. So if you're going to do an improvement project, are you going to be doing small tests of change? Are we going to be doing an experiment? Are we going to be doing um, flow charting? Are we uh, process charting? Are we going to be looking at addressing, um, you know? order of operations, so first in, first out, right? We talked about those and um, tried to uh, get that sorted out. So that again, you know, course two. So think back to course two with the project approach. Um, again, the comparison, uh, if you're doing a comparison project approach, are you thinking you're gonna do a comparison with another facility at, another VA facility that's similar, but not 
um, similar to your location, but not in maybe not in your vision, in a different vision maybe. Um, are you going to do a comparison to private sector? Are you going to do a comparison to your local community? So a lot of people with the emergency department, we kind of looked at that as part of what's going on. Okay, so you need to identify specifically what are you trying to address? Okay. Um, So what you're, what you're trying to address, so what is specifically, what are we trying to look at here? What are we looking at, okay? Then we wanna do what's your basic project approach. You don't need to be super detailed right here. You're, I'm not looking for, I'm gonna do this for five days and then we're gonna have a seven person team and then we're gonna do that, okay? In this place, just generally speaking, what kind of project are you gonna plan on doing? What are we looking at here? Are we looking at comparison? Are we looking at improvement? Are we looking at a combo? Maybe you're gonna do comparison first and then improvement, or maybe we're doing improvement and then comparison. Okay, what are you planning to do? So it just, in general terms, what are you planning to do? Okay, then give some background around your question, your situation. Okay, so why are we did, um, um, so why are we doing, you know, what are we doing? Why are we looking at this? Okay, and um, if you're, you know, if you're looking at this question and problem and you're looking at what you did in homework one and you don't want to necessarily use that, you can definitely choose um, choose another project to look at. So, you know, if you are if you have the data and the case study from the emergency room um, clinic thing uh, project that we did in course three, and then um, we just had that one as part of homework number two, that would be something that you could also um, you could also take a look at if that seems to be more interesting and more relevant to what the needs at your facility are. You can definitely do that. I just recommend that you do use homework one to make minimal amount of work for you, rework for yourself um, in terms of getting this done. So, you know, just what we're looking for here is as long as you can go in depth on all of this, you should be able to um, use any project. I recommend homework one and suggest homework one just to make it easier on yourself. But if you've got another one, something that came, has come up in the meantime that would be more relevant for you, you can definitely go ahead and use that as long as you're able to answer all of the things here on your what to submit list, okay? So you need to have, again, question or problem, the approach, what am I gonna do about it, okay? The background is, why should I care about this? Okay, why do I care about this? Why should, why should I, as the reader, why should I, as you know, our customer here, Alex, why should Alex care about looking at your project? So give me some background, give me the, the so what, Okay. And I know that's really, you know, that seems kind of blunt and it seems kind of harsh, but if you can't answer, you told me about this project and I've got an idea to fix it. Well, so what, why do I, why should I look at it? Why should I continue reading this? Why should this be something that I need to, I need to pay attention to? So give me the background around it. Okay. Tell me why this has been an issue. Have you heard, you know, is it something where there's complaints? Have we seen wait times increase? Is it a publicity um, issue? Is it something where, where we've got unused, um, you know, unused uh, appointment slots. I had somebody find out in one class um, several years ago that they were coding diabetes wrong. So all the all the diabetes, all the diabetics for that for an entire um, for an entire clinic, and it was not a small clinic, um, were being coded as uncontrolled. Well, that that's an issue. Okay, so it doesn't have to necessarily um, be. I had somebody else who was looking at trying to address why the um, why the operating rooms weren't getting turned over. So it doesn't necessarily, your project, as I've said before, it doesn't necessarily have to directly impact patient care. I had somebody else look at billing um, and the recouping the insurance payments from, um, uh, you know, and from private sector, I think it was. So there's been, I've had projects all over the place. Somebody else was looking at trying to build, um, make a case for building a new clinic. Uh, that they'd already, they'd sort of picked the location, but they were looking at getting bids from contractors in terms of actually, they had to actually build it. So there's been a lot of stuff over the years that people have looked at, but all of it has to come down to give me the, so what, why should we, why is this something we need to look at? Okay, and this is something people are really good, um, and you guys are as well, you're really good at saying, here's what the situation, you know, here's, there's this problem situation and we need to do something about it. But again, you know, one of the things that I'm working with you guys on in this course so that when you are done with this course, you are going to be able to go one step farther and say, hey, you know, this is an issue. I think we need to address it. And here is why. 
So that so what is the why, okay? Why should we address this, okay? And kind of continuing along that, we're looking at what opportunities this project can address. Okay, and these should look very familiar to you, right? Values, risk, and the business needs. So when we're looking at the values and the risks, okay, I'm not looking, this needs to be more than just a paragraph. Okay, go back and look at the um, uh, lecture number two. We talked about multiple types of value, right? We've got the three perspectives, environmental, economical, and societal, right? We've got our six, um, our six value streams, that you can take a look at, or um, depending, usually six, kind of six, the six main ones, right? So you wanna take a look at all of those and you need to identify all of those. If you're having trouble coming up with values for each of those, or ideas for each of those value streams um, and each of those perspectives, think about looking at, um, we kind of talked about, I have one slide I, in um, assignment or in a lecture two, and I can't remember what the number is off the top of my head, but it's got things like safety on it. It's got things like efficiency on it. So look at safety and say, okay, I've got um, safety. I've got safety. Is there a you know? And I've got safety of the veteran is what I'm going to start out by looking at. So we're going to look at safety of the veteran. How is that going to be impacted in terms of reaction? Okay, how is that going to be in um, uh, you know reaction and perspective and uh, perception? Okay, how is that going to be um, addressed? Is there a value of safety in learning and confidence? Is there value of safety of implementation? Okay, what about you know, application and implementation? So you go through those different things. What about intangible? What about ROI? And you go through each of those and think, okay, you know, how can I, is there a value? And that's one of the reasons for me, at least, um, and I know I, I've seen, you know, several of you guys have different ways to address, to kind of put it together. For me, I like making an Excel spreadsheet and then I list my, um, either list the values across the top and then the stakeholder groups on the side or the other way around. And then I just try to fill in the boxes. How many boxes can I fill in? And if I'm running into problems with that, I use that, um, that one slide that has all the different things on it that says to, as a starter, okay, as, as a jumping off point to start, get, start getting me thinking. And you can really start out by brainstorming these, right? The other thing you wanna take a look at, again, risks should be a pretty sizable section. Just like values, values had an entire le lecture, risk had an entire lecture. So these sections need to be more than a paragraph. Okay, with the risks, again, we've got six different risk groupings, um, kind of risk streams that we're looking at. And one of the biggest things, and this is one of the hardest things to do, is um, one of the biggest things I noticed in homework two is framing things in a, a risk format, okay, instead of putting together a to-do list. So what is the risk, for example, if we think about our emergency room um, and we're gonna close the emergency room and open an urgent care. Okay, so what are the risks? Not what are we gonna do about it and not how we're gonna mitigate the risk, but what are the risks? Okay, so one of the risks with process might be that we if we close the urgent care or if we close the emergency room and have an urgent care, a process risk might be that we don't address um, a veteran, a safety risk might be a, that we don't address um, a veteran's, a veteran's safe, um, diagnosis in time, and we don't get them sent out to an actual emergency room when they're needed. So our triage went wrong because we don't have emergency room um, level personnel staffing the urgent care. So that would be that would be a risk. That's we have an un, we have somebody. You know, a risk would be that a, pa a patient dies because we don't have the right personnel in place, or we can't get them to an emergency room fast enough. That's a process issue. It's not what are we going to do about it. It's just that is the risk. The risk of keeping the emergency room open um, and from a safety aspect, process aspect, is that emergency room physicians are not trained um, and are not, well, they have a lot of the same training, but they're not going to be um, focused on things that are going to be more of a chronic situation. So they may not, um, they may not, they may get something wrong. And so something that should be seen by uh, um, that should be seen by your regular primary physician, the primary care physician, the PCP, is not addressed properly. So that's gonna be a safety issue in process, okay? So that's how you're gonna frame it as a risk, not how we're gonna mitigate it, not how we're gonna address it. So risk, the list of risks needs to be framed as risk, and it's hard to do. It is hard to think of risk. It's, it's much, much easier to think of what is the value than to think about, well, what if something goes wrong? What could go wrong? 
So what you're really looking at ask, with the risk, instead of asking, how can I fix what can go wrong? Ask yourself just what can go wrong and answer that question. What can go wrong with process? What can go wrong with marketing? What can go wrong with um, administrative? Okay, what can go wrong with personnel? So think about how, think about those risks. What can go wrong financially? Okay, and just answer the question, what can go wrong? And stop there. You don't need to put the to-do list together. That's going to come somewhere else down, that's going to come down the road in the paper, okay? You just want to answer that question, what can go wrong if? Okay, what can go wrong? That's what a risk is. So in each of those, what can go wrong with the process? What can go wrong with the financials? What can go wrong with the marketing? What can go wrong? What can go wrong if we change it? What can go wrong if we don't change it? And just make a list. So a, ri a, li a list of risks is just what answering that question, what can go wrong in these different areas? And then later on, we'll come up with a to-do list on how we can mitigate those risks. So don't worry about trying to mitigate it. Worry more, focus more on what is the, what is the actual risk. Now, when we're looking at those business needs, right, we've talked about tangible and intangible. We've talked about job performance needs. We've talked about learning needs. We've talked about preference needs. So go back and look at those needs. So those needs, these needs here, should be tied back to your background, which should be tied back to your question. Does that make sense? So if you're understanding your needs, if you under, have a good understanding of your question and problem, making sure that you've got the background around the so what you should be able to identify business needs in those multiple categories. So again, we've got tangible, intangible, we've got job performance, we've got learning, we've got pre um, preference needs. All of those different things need to go into that. Okay, then you're going to do a summary of your key findings from your preliminary analysis. So again, going back to that case study, a summary. You want to have it in depth, like fairly in depth though, because we need, again, this summary and the key findings should be backing up this, here's the problem. Here's why it's a problem. Okay, so your, your key findings should be backing this up here, the question and the background, and the so what. Okay, then again, we're going to go, we're going to add objectives. So what are your potential objectives? And you need to have at least four objectives, one for each of the four groupings. Okay, if you can't remember what those four are, go back to lecture one. There's a slide that is on objectives. It lists out the four types of objectives. So you need a minimum of four objectives one for each of those types. You might have more, and that's fine, but you need to have objectives, okay? And objectives are what are the goals of your project? What are you trying to accomplish, okay? Outcome is how am I, how am I gonna know that I, I met my goal? Okay, so the objectives are um, what am I going to accomplish? Outcomes are how am I going to know that I'm, I met my goal? So with the outcomes, think of, some types and levels of measurement. So this goes back to our discussion question, right? I think it's from week three. I'm trying to think. No, that week three was just week four. Week four was type and level of measurement. So what we're looking at in type and level of measurement, what you want to look at here is first choose the type of measurement. Are you going to have a nominal? Are you going to have an ordinal? Or are you going to have um, interval ratio? Okay. So once you figure that out, or excuse me, that's the level of measure. Once you fig figure out your level of measurement, then you're going to go down and you're going to see, kind of look and fill in those groupings. So you're going to fill in your um, conceptual, your, or your um, operational and your variable box for those measurements. Okay, so if you choose ordinal measurements, first choose ordinal, nominal, ordinal, or interval ratio, and then you're going to go down from there and fill in, okay, I've got an ordinal measurement. Here's what my measurement is. Here's the conceptual, so here's what it is. Ordinal is here's how I'm gonna do it, or excuse me, operational is here's how I'm gonna do it. And then your variable is here's exactly, here's how we're gonna measure it. No yes or you know, know what the, the outcome is. Okay, then you also need to give me the reason for that measurement choice, okay? So why did you pick this particular one, okay? So why did you choose that measurement? Why do you think that would be a good measurement for your, um, for your project, okay? So why would you think that is gonna be a good measurement for your project? Why do you think that is the best choice? Okay, then we're gonna determine impact and effectiveness. 
So how are you going to know that there was an impact? So not just how, not did just, not just did you meet the goal, right? Um, and so with a did you meet the goal, right? We and I even saw in some of your week five um, discussion posts that I've I've read through, right? A lot of people kind of talked about projects that we met the goals, but there was no sustainability on it, right? There's no sustainability there. So what we're looking at here is whether or not you've got that impact. What kind of impact did it actually have? Did you not only meet your goal, but did it have the impact that you hoped? And how effective was it? So it's not very effective if we can't sustain it. So how are you going to determine whether it's effective? That it actually you think it's going to stay stay moving forward or stay the new process is going to stay in place? Because how many of us have had um, been involved in a project or seen a project where we get the project done right? Two weeks later or two months later, somebody comes by and it's back to the old way of doing things. I am totally guilty of doing that, and I'm sure you guys are as well. So think about the effectiveness of the project. How are you going to determine that it's going to be effective? So think about how you're going to figure that out. Then you also need to have two pieces to a basic action plan. And when I talk about basic action plan and I talk about major milestones, what are the key things you need to have done? I don't necessarily need dates. But what are the key pieces of this project that, you're, that you need to put together in order to accomplish this? What are the key steps? Okay, if you're using Lean Six Sigma, you can go through um, some of the steps with that. If you are uh, using a different format, again, what do you need to do? Do you need to form a team? Do you need to get approval? Do you need to have, um, you know, are you going to need to do some observations? Are we going to do a small test of change? Do we need to... Uh, do a couple different things, you know, so what do you need? What do you need to do? What are those major milestones? If you have an idea of how long they might take, you can definitely put that in, but it is not required. I am not looking for dates. I'm not looking for you to say we are going to have this project done by end of fiscal year 19. That is not, um, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, can you come up with the key pieces that need to occur with this project in order for it to, to be finalized and be done? And then I also want to know how are you going to, how is your plan, your project going to address the eight aspects on page six of module six lecture notes? So we are actually going to take a look at that right now. So hang on one second. Um, and we're going to try to get, I'm going to try to take a look at that and see where we're at. So we've got page six lecture notes. Okay, so this is the same page six that you guys are looking at. And you can see here we've got eight different components. So I need you to look at eight, those eight aspects as part of your action plan. Okay, so what do we have here? We've got a couple, oops, I'm sorry, don't mean to spin everything around. So when we're looking at, whoopsies, our eight aspects here. Okay, so eight aspects. So what, what is your type of data? Are you, you know, what kind of data are you looking at? Um, we've got qualitative, we've got quantitative, we've got combination, you know, is it, you know, interview, what are we doing? Then, it, then you need to look at the investment in time. And these, this is where people, a lot of people get tripped up is there should be two pieces to your investment in time. A participant is somebody who's actually participating in the project. So if you're on the project team, if you're running the project team, if you've got frontline um, people that are gonna be answering questions, uh, if you're gonna be working with another department, so who is going to, the people who are going to actually be involved, how much, give an estimate, again, we're using our estimate from our estimating powers that we've newly acquired, so give an estimate in time, how much time is this going to take? Is it going to be that we're going to do it, um, uh, you know, a rapid process improvement week? So we're going to do it in a week and everybody's going to focus on that. Are we going to do it uh, one meeting, one hour, one, one hour meeting a week? Are we thinking it's going to take us um, two hours a week, one for a meeting, one hour for a meeting and one hour for working on the project? You know, give an estimate, okay? And then this is an estimate for the people who are going to be participating in the project. Also give an estimate of time for anybody in management. Who are you gonna be giving reports to? Are you gonna to have to be doing updates weekly? Are you gonna be doing a one hour update once a month? Um, who are you gonna be reporting this to? Just your own supervisor? Are you gonna be reporting it up to your quadrad? Um, who's who's going to be receiving this? Who's going to be kind of checking in? Who do we need to keep abreast of what's going on with this? And again, these are going to be estimates. So use your newly acquired estimating powers for participant and management. So I'm looking for two different time estimates. It is very, very, very rare that these will be the same amount of time. 
So you need to have two different ones. And this is where people just do a general in investment of time and not specific to the two groups because these are usually very different. Okay, give us an estimate of cost. Is there any extra cost that's going to be needed for this or is it going to be just the cost of um, paying the people who are already, you know, it's already in budget because we're using people, um, we're going to be using people we're already paying anyways. Or do we need to buy something? Um, so look at the cost. Okay, disruption. What kind of, um, when we're talking about disruption, is it something that people that we're going to just do observation, we're going to watch them, are we going to need to have a week where they try something out? Um, is it going to be only disruption for the participants on the team, or is it going to be disruption, disrupting for others in the department that you're working with? How are you going to determine your accuracy? How are you going to validate your results? Okay, we talked about validation in all three courses up to this point. So how are you going to validate your results? How are you going to know your data is accurate? How are you going to verify that you've accomplished your goals, your, met your objectives? Okay. Are there any additional methods that you think might be helpful? So maybe you're thinking that you're going to do an improvement project, but an additional method might be doing a comparison later on. Maybe after we've done, um, you know, had this new process in place for a year or so. Okay. Also, what type of bias will be present in this, uh, in this particular project and in, on the project team? What can you guess? Okay, and I'm not looking for whether or not you're going to have all of the different types of bias, but what do you see? What would be at your, you know, what kind of at a first glance, what do you think, what type of bias will be present? And there's always some sort of bias present. So, you know, kind of look at how you're going to, um, you know, how you're going to kind of address that. So, Really make sure when you're doing your uh, your action plan, I'm looking for the major milestones, and I'm also looking for how does it address these eight aspects. Okay, and I did put on here just so you guys are aware. Some people like to have a separate um, attachment or an appendix for your preliminary analysis um, findings and your action plan. It's not it's not something that I require, but some people like to kind of set it up that way. If you set it up that way, if you have separate documents, make sure you label them um, report, you know, analysis, preliminary analysis and action plan. Also, or if you just put them in an appendix, um, you can just put them at the end and then just refer, you know, just have them listed. And so if you have an appendices, usually it's a good idea to kind of put a little table of contents. So like here's the main report. And then we have appendix A is preliminary analysis findings or discussion of preliminary analysis. And then um, Appendix B is action plan, et cetera. So that just helps for organization. So you, again, it's, it's not something that's necessary. I just wanted to put it out there that if that helps you with the flow of your report to have those in a different section, you can definitely do that. Okay, and that, that's totally fine. Just make sure that when you put, that you get all of the, um, all of the files posted in before you hit the final submit. So. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions? You guys are really quiet today, which is either good or bad, I think. We've got one more office hour after this, so let me, um, after this one, for homework five. But is there any questions? Do you guys have any questions on any, on any of the materials at all? Or is everything looking pretty good? I know when we did... Um, Okay, so a standardized format for the project, the projection, like, um, are you thinking like the, the eight aspects part or like this, the, uh, this part of the beginning part? Can you clarify it a little bit for me, Christy, which, which part? Oh, is it a memo? Um, it's, it's a report. So think about a report as a really, um, a really big memo. So in a report, um, here, we'll get, hang on. We're gonna, we'll go back to this. We'll get rid of that so you guys can see a little bit. Not so distracting. Okay, so it's going to be a report. And in terms of report, there is, in, and basically with this type of report, what you wanna do is you wanna make it as detailed as you can. So there is no page limit on the report. However, um, yeah, and Jean, um, Jeanette pointed out that Word has you know, some templates that you guys can customize. Totally fine if that works out for you. But think of a report as just a really, really, really long memo. Okay, so again, everything should be super detailed because what we're trying to do is 
in in our scenario here that we're we're working with, there is going this group that we're our customer group that that Alex here is running, our guy Alex. Um, so our guy Alex here is running a group, and he is trying to the group is trying to choose projects that they're going to recommend for um, becoming that they're we're actually going to they're actually going to work on. Okay, our fic, our fictional group here. So what you want to do is you want to supply them with a report that has enough details in it, so it should be totally standalone, but has enough details in it that they're going to think that, yes, this project is the one that we need to recommend. This is the one that we're going to go with. So in order to do that, in order to do that project proposal, you need to have as detailed as you can be on all of these components, okay? So again, you know, pull from homework one, totally valid. I would expect that you would. If you decided that you wanted to choose um, an it, after doing the assignments around the emergency room or the clinic, that those actually make more sense for your location, you can definitely work with those as well. Um, so what you're going to do is, regardless of what your scenario is, what, you're, what you choose, you want to make sure that you're, you're really, really detailed because this is kind of like your one chance to get your project um, kind of through to the final round, if you will. And at this point, you're going to be, you've got the report, so you aren't going to necessarily be there to answer questions. Like you were for assignment number one, we had that presentation, right? So the idea there would be that if somebody has questions after watching your presentation, then you'd be, um, you'd be able to answer those because you'd be there in person. With this one now, we're saying, okay, they want some more information. They want some more details on things. We want, we want to know a little bit more. We want to know more in depth. Give me some more ideas on values for my three stakeholder groups. I need to know, I'd like to know about risks. I want some more details on those business needs, the tangible, intangible, our job um, performance, our learning, our preference needs. Um, you know, let's do a recap of the summary as to the why should I pay attention to this again? You know, let's support, support that. Uh, what are your goals for this project? How are you going to measure these goals? So remember, outcomes is how are we going to measure, how do we know that we got to our, we achieved our goals? So outcome is how do we know we've achieved our object objectives? Okay, so objective is the goal. Outcome is how do we know we got there? Okay, so in detail, type and level of measurement. So go back to that nominal ordinal interval ratio. Okay, fill out, choose one of those and fill it down. Tell me why this is the measurement you think we should use. Why do you think that is the measurement? And again, with this, you know, at this point, you may or may not know how to take the measurement, and that's totally fine. Um, that's why we ha I chose that book, How to Measure Anything for this class because there's a lot of things out there that we may not necessarily know how to measure. So give me the reason. Why do you think this is the this measurement would work? Why do you think this measurement is going to help us know if we've achieved our objectives? And then how do we know that the, the project is actually going to be effective? Again, going back to what I was saying about, um, you know, we've all been either been on a project or seen a project that was really, really good for about a month. And then after that, it just sort of fell off the radar and nobody did anything more with it. Right. I've been, I've seen those. I'm totally guilty of once in a while, kind of going back to the old way of doing things instead of sticking with the new way of doing things. Right. We've all done that. What kind of impact will this have? How are we going to determine impact? Are we going to only look at finances, the financial aspect of it, or are we going to also look at, um, are we also going to look at things like improvements on uh, surveys? Are we going to look at, at wait times reduced? Are we going to look at just kind of in general, what do people look like in the waiting room? Do they look happier, you know, when you just anecdotally? So how are you going to decide what that impact is and how are you going to decide what the effectiveness is? How, do we, how are we going to know this is a good project? Because I want all of you to, when you finish this course in two weeks, two and a half weeks, that you are going to be the people when you put together a project, your projects are going to be the, the solid ones. Yours are going to be the ones that are sustainable, that do have that impact, that do have the effectiveness to keep moving, that are going to affect change in the organization. That's the idea. That's why we put this particular class together as part of this program is because it's great if you can analyze data and you can do the data mining, but if you can't sell it, if you can't sell it, as part of a project or as part of making changes, that you're losing a lot. You're, they're, they're lo there's a lot of skill that you guys have. You've built all this skill in looking at the data itself, but if you can't take it one step farther and sell it 
as to why this is why data is important, why the data that you found is important, and how it can be part of a project, then you're really you're really kind of missing out. You're not using those skills as as best as you can. So that's why we put this project analysis course on kind of as a capstone piece in this in this uh, certificate program. So you've got that impact and effectiveness, and then you're going to put together. How are we going to do this? Here's my basic action plan. Here is how I think, here's how I see this project going forth. Here's how I see this project moving forward. We've got major milestones. I've looked at my eight aspects. So we've got that, how are we, you know, how, how do I see this moving forward? So when you think about it, if you've got all of these pieces, and again, these should be as in-depth as you can possibly make them. If you've got all of these pieces, when somebody is reviewing your project, so when you've, you've got a project, a group of people who's reviewing a project, you've looked at it from all the different angles. You've got the data to back it up. You looked at how is it bringing value to our different groups. We've looked at risks, taken a preliminary look at what if those risks, what if, you know, what if something goes wrong or what could go wrong, okay? Then we're gonna have that action plan. We've got our goals. This is really, this is really a complete project, um, a project summary, a project proposal in order to, have that address so in order to do a good analysis and these are all things that you can use if you're on, if you are on a project team as you work through putting together a project or as you're working on a project come back to this list and say okay do we have all these pieces have we thought about risk have we thought about the preference needs have we thought about our eight aspects down here how what kind of measurement are we having and why are we having it why do we choose this why do we think this is the one to recommend Okay, so you're going to go through all of these different things as you're as you're putting together that report. So um, kind of as I mentioned really early on for anybody who joined us a few minutes late, there is no page limit on a report. However, if you get up to like, you know, 40 pages, it's going to take a while for me to get it graded. So um, you can definitely do 40 pages. If you need 40 pages, please use it. Um, but generally speaking, most of the reports that I've seen come through over the years have been kind of around that you know, like 10 to 20 pages-ish. I think so. I think a lot of people, once you get to 20 pages, you kind of get tired of writing, don't you? I've written a lot of really, really long, long, long reports and experiment write-ups and things. And once you get to past 20 pages, it, it seems like it kind of goes on and on. But definitely, if you need it, use the pages. There is no page limit um, on the report. So Kind of, you know, a really super detailed, super expanded. Um, Jeanette's got the suggestion, you know, go. you can use some of those project templates in Word to write things up. Um, use the, you can go back and look at the examples in, I think they were in module two. Module two for home, the examples for homework two, I think those were in module two. So if you look up those, those would be some ideas. So yeah, so the preliminary analysis data, this is a good question. Maria's got a question around, um, Making where do, the preliminary analysis data, do you have to find new data? No, you do not need to find new data. So use the data that we used in homework that we pulled in course one, or course one, oh my. Um, use the data that you pulled in course three, homework three. So use the data from your case study. If your data is severely out of date, you should be able, if you've done a good job with your case study, you should be able to just update it. So have some fairly recent data. So you don't want data that's, you know, like three years old. Um, so have some, you know, somewhat current data, but you don't have to pull all new data. If you, again, you know, maybe run your, run your, um, your, uh, your pyramid reports one more time to make sure you've got what you needed. But then the summary of the preliminary analysis should be the summary of the data that you used in course three, homework three. So for most of you, that's pretty recent because um, we just did that in, in the fall. So use that and then kind of use what you did in homework one to, come up with your preliminary analysis. So if you did a good, you know, if you've got your preliminary analysis summary in homework one, and you also did that case study in assignment three, way back in course three this fall, then it should be pretty easy to do that summary. And in your summary, I would expect to see, um, you know, see some graphs. If you're talking numbers, you know, you should, you're probably gonna, have, most people are gonna have some graphs of some sort. Um, preliminary analysis summary, again, be pretty detailed. You don't, you don't wanna just say, well, we found out this was important, and here's one example of why. Give me the details. Again, this is, you want your project, this this group that we're talking to, Alex's group here, you, you want your project to be the one that they pick. 
So you need to make your case the best that you can that your project should be the one that we're gonna spend funds on this year. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So um, we've got about 15 minutes left. Any questions on any of the lectures on five or six at all? Four, five, or six? Anything there? Anything on lectures? Anything on the assignment? Um, PDF document as usual. Again, if you do need to, if you do want to do um, separate documents for the analysis, preliminary analysis and the action plan, you can definitely do that. Um, like I said, some people just get it. It takes a bit to get, it helps them with organization. It is not necessary. You can do it all in line in a single document. Totally fine with me. Um, I've had it both ways over the years. Does not, does not make a difference which way around. I just wanted to let you know. If you do that, if you do that, if you do do that separate, separate documents for the preliminary analysis and the action plan, just make sure that you upload everything. Um, I'm going to do my best to have the office hours posted this afternoon. Um, fingers crossed, I tried to post the, um, the week five class email, I don't know how many times, but the website was down every single time and nobody told me. So I'm going to try to get, um, I'm going to try to get this posted up as quickly as I can. Um, and I think every WebEx seems to be working on my end just fine today. So fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed on my end, both hands here, trying to get that posted as soon as we can so that you guys can have the information. So I will definitely try to do that. Um, what other questions do you guys have? This is kind of, if you think about it, this, this, this assignment is probably going to be the longest one in terms of actual writing that you guys have done to date. So use your spell check. Use your grammar check. Look at your, um, your plurals versus possessives. Okay, I know I put that in one of the class emails, I think, about um, plural versus possessive. So look at, you know, look at those different things. Really kind of think about how are you going to sell your project? That's what this is, is you're going to make, you're basically making a sales pitch here that this is the project we should choose. And if you do end up using this project, you know, going forward, then you've already got a pretty good uh, ana project analysis proposal done. If you end up not using it, that's totally fine. You've gone through the process. So like I said, I am not uh, anticipating that every single project that it gets submitted as part of this course is going to be done. It would be really cool if it was because I've seen some awesome projects come through that I think could really, really, really go a long ways um, at the VA. And so I keep watching sometimes to see, uh, see if I can see any of the projects pop up um, over the years. And some of them have and some of them haven't. So. You know, but the idea here is that you're going to really be able to take the time to, to make your case for something that you are really interested in. Okay. So what, um, what other questions do you guys have? That's all I had. That's all the, and that's all the questions that I had up to this point on email. What other questions do you guys have? Okay, if there are no more questions, um, we can be, we can finish a little early and you guys can have 15 extra minutes to do, um, to do something, either work on the, pro work on your assignment or um, do everything else. Oh, the new baby? Um, she's doing well. She's actually the one with the fever today. She's teething, so she's not too happy at the moment, but in general, she's, she's doing really well. Um, she's nine months old already. So for those of you who, uh, who remember that? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I can't believe it. So, but I think it goes faster by the time you get to the third kid, right? That's what they tell me. Anyways, so, um, but yeah, so everything, uh, everything on my end seems to be going well, other than general winter cold. So hopefully everybody on your, everybody out there is staying healthy. Um, I haven't surprisingly this winter, I have not had very many of you guys um, having a lot of illness which is really cool. I'm glad. Last year, oh my gosh, I know it was big flu season, but I swear half of our class, me included, at some point got sick during course four, the, the one through the December, January. So, um, so hopefully um, everybody's going to, I'm going to, I'm sending good vibes out for everybody to stay well. So um, what other questions, does anybody have any last questions? 
because I really don't have a whole lot left. We'll have one more office hour in two weeks, and that's going to be the last office hour for this course and for the whole program. So if you guys have any questions that you've always wanted to know, um, that's the time, going to be the time to ask them. If you've got a question that you don't want to ask necessarily, um, you don't know if you don't want everybody to know um, that you're the one asking it, send it to me an email, and I'll I can answer them on uh, when I do the office hours. So we've got an office hour in two weeks. Next week, Tuesday, you have week six discussion due and assignment number four. Okay, and I am going to try to get this office hours posted up as uh, quickly as I can for you guys. And hopefully um, we'll get it up. I'm going to try to check it tonight just to see if it did get posted up. Otherwise, I'm hoping it'll be up first thing tomorrow morning. Because I'm not the one that posts them up. I have to send them to my tech admin, and then she posts it up. So it kind of depends on what else she does, because she's not only, unfortunately, I don't get my own admin. I have to share. So um, depending on what's going on, hopefully we'll get these uh, posted up as soon as possible. So thank you guys for um, all logging on today. If you have any questions that you think of later, send me an email and I can get those, um, those answered for you guys. Otherwise, good luck. I am very interested to see how things go with this, uh, this assignment. Th this, the ones with everybody's personal projects are always a ton of fun for me to grade, just to see the, the cool things that you guys come up with. So with that, thank you everybody. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. And we'll see, we'll see you, talk to you in two weeks. So thanks.